Why do you think I can't jump to look at your sentences? Why? What's the reason? Don't be shy. There is nobody else in here. Just ask. <laughs> right. Because I want you to understand that it's not as easy as we think to write you know, one clear, clean sentence to describe one main idea in a complete sentence. It's not a joke, it's no picnic, right? So that's why it's highly structured. You have to plan for it, and it takes a lot of practice. Okay? And you need to be exposed to good examples of getting it right. Yeah? Okay. Move on. Okay, so now back to some of the, the main features. Okay, so formal writing and informal writing. So my first question is is it just like dress code? The way we are dressed? I, we're talking about the idea. Is it just like our dress code? Yes. yes. Right? So depending on the occasion, we will decide, we will choose which kind of clothes to wear. Right? So when you come to university, you'll be dressing formally. But when you are out with your friend evening for a party, you will choose to be a bit more casual, a bit more informal because you can relax. So the same thing with writing. Okay? So you write an email, you are chatting, texting with your friend, right? You don't need to worry too much about grammar, spelling, comma, transition, forget it, right? But for this kind of writing, academic writing, it is formal, okay? So I remember that, okay? Then, what is informal English? Can you give me one or two examples, ideas? What kind of English is informal? Speaking, spoken English, spoken English, and what else? When you listen to songs, English songs, is that language formal or informal? Yes. Mostly informal. Okay, good. Uh, now, the next question, why do we need formal academic writing? Because that's a requirement, yeah, and also because we want to succeed Professionally, we want to succeed academically, right? Okay, now this is quiz time. Let's take a look at these very simple examples. I have given you a list of, you know, plain English, the kind of... you sitting at the back, can you hear me clearly? Yes. Properly? Ordinary. Okay, I'm just testing. How many of you were here last time when I was here? Can I see the hand? Push it. Push it. Push it. First of all, can I request you to put all your mobile phones on silent mode so there's no can pay attention to the phone the So again, I'm in a, a different context, in a different room. The last time was wider, more spacious, but I'm happier now because the air comes better. <laughs> last time I was sweating like a pig, <laughs> and then sometimes you know, I lost attention to some of the main topics that I was supposed to do. Okay, so good morning again. I thank you for your time, and you know, we love for the food in to be here this morning. Despite the weather, despite the traffic, yeah. So thank you for your time again. Uh, my name is Sultan. I teach at Ascension University in Bangkok. Okay. So there we teach English in an English medium. So mostly, you know, I'm familiar with 
giving lectures, you know, doing talks in English. So back in my university, my main responsibilities are curriculum, uh, revisions, okay, writing textbooks, teacher training, okay, things like that, more into that thing. So that's what I found myself. As I grow older, I'm doing less and less teaching and more and more this kind of thing. Okay, so that's where I am now professionally. So I did my first degree here in Rangoon, at the University of Rangoon, English major. And then I left and I went to Singapore. I spent some time there searching for scholarship at that time. It was extremely difficult because at that time, Burma and Myanmar wasn't one of the ASEAN countries. So you can imagine my age, I'm one of those dinosaurs. And then, I ended up in Bangkok and I did my master's degree in English literature at Chulalongkorn University in half. Okay? And then I paused for almost about two years and then I got again another scholarship to study okay, University of Nottingham in England to do my PhD. Okay, so I spent another three and a half years. Okay? So I'm telling you all these, not just to you know blow my own trumpet, okay? simply to inspire some of you who may be thinking, oh, this is a big puddle, it's such a steep mountain to climb, it's almost, you know, impossible challenge for me, I am nothing, I have no support. Please don't think like that, everything is possible, as long as you keep going, you keep trying, okay? And then, you know, opportunity opens, so many doors, and you'll be surprised, you'll be amazed. Okay? So as long as you keep trying, never give up, okay? and you have to be angry, you need to have that anger, the thirst for knowledge, and then you know everything will be provided at the end. Okay? Alright, so that is hard. Now I think we are a little bit behind time. Okay? So let me focus on the main topic for this morning. So the question that I'm asking this morning is, what is academic writing? Okay, what is academic writing? So initially I thought I would be with you on the floor, walking about, talking to you in groups. But I think I just have to stay here on the podium. Maybe for about 30 minutes. After that, I come down to you and then we'll really get close. Okay? So I might ask you to stay in small groups, okay? groups of five, to five or six, and then we'll try together to answer some of the key questions. Okay? So now the very first question is, what is academic writing? What do you think? What kind of writing is called academic writing? When people mention academic writing, what comes to your mind? Hello? You there? Thank you. Yeah. So, I don't know, I started feeling like I'm talking to the wall, I'm talking, I'm talking to myself. No response yet. So, what kind of writing is considered academic writing? Any ideas from the students? Sorry? Systematic, that's a key word, right? So it's systematic writing. But, some of you will notice, I write poetry also, I write poems. And I feel that you know, the way I write poems are most of the time is systematic. There's a system in poetry as well. So is poetry academic writing? Can you write your own poetry, your poems, and get a PhD? Or an MA? Okay, so systematic has to be there, that's a key word. And what else? Formal. Who said that? Formal writing. Formal writing. F O R M A L. Formal writing. Yeah. So that's the crux of the matter, right? That's the essence of the talk this morning, right? So academic writing is formal writing. So whenever we mention the term academic writing, in this context, in the academia, in university context, okay? So we, professors, teachers, and students alike, we think of things like 
this is, right? This is, we think of things like research articles, right? The articles that you write for publication, right? So mainly these two things crop up, but it's more than that, okay? Have a look. Essays, right? The kind of essays you write in high school, okay, at the university level, reports, report writing, okay? business report, memorandum, okay? all these kind of writings. Reflective thesis for literature student, okay? for English literature student. Okay? So your professor will assign you to read uh, a play, a drama, and then you have to write a commentary, a reflective piece. Okay? And other things like book reports, summaries, reading journals, and last but not the least, annotative bibliographies, right? That's, okay? So that's why in your thesis, we have literature review chapter, right? Okay? And then you said formal, right? So that's very important. Okay? So academic writing is formal in tone and style. The tone is your voice, okay? The way you speak, the way you write. Okay? So in tone and style, style of writing. Okay? So you cannot write like you speak. You cannot use colloquial expressions. It's not spoken English, it's written English. And the sentences have to be structured, and you have to use formal academic vocabulary for this kind of writing. Okay? And last, level headed. That's very important. Level headed. I'm talking about your head has to be level-headed. What does it mean, level-headed? Somebody who is level-headed. Level-headed. When you are drunk, you have whiskey, you have two, three rounds of whiskey, you think you can still remain level-headed? No. no. So that's the opposite. So level-headed means your writing, your reasoning, your thinking is sober. S O B E R, sober, yeah, and it's reasoned. It's, it shows that you 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 think critically about what you're writing, yeah. So that's a meaning level that level. Okay, is it a lot to digest on one slide? How are you doing? Are you so far so good? So far no good. <laughs> okay. So anyway, let's move on. Okay. So now I think. I might have to come down to you, okay? So you have a piece of paper with you, you have a pen, yeah? Okay, so now my question is, this is the question that I would like you to ask yourself every time you do your assignment, every time you do your academic writing, okay? The question is, can you hear the ping? Can you hear the ping? P-I-N-G, ping. What does it mean, ping? Ping. Do you know the word epiphany? Epiphany? Hello? There's no place for me to write anyway. Let me spell E-P-I-P-H-A-N-Y. Epiphany. Did I spell it correctly? Epiphany. Yeah. What does it mean, epiphany? What is epiphany? Do you read James Joyce, the Irish author James Joyce? Portrait of the artist as a young man? James Joyce. Anyway, so epiphany is, you know, all of a sudden, you're thinking about something, all of a sudden, you are hit by a brilliant idea, a bright idea, a very good idea. And you go like, wow, that's, a, that's the best idea. That's a 